Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on matrices. Now, in the previous video, we've been talking about leading rows and leading columns and leading entries of matrices. In this presentation, we're going to continue that role and talk about a row echelon form of a matrix. And for that, you need to know leading entries, leading rows, leading columns, etc. Now, the point about having a row echelon form, whatever it is, is that we can easily solve a linear system uh, of equations by just looking at the rows and reading off part of the solution. So let me share my screen with you. We'll do some examples and uh, we can get underway. All right, so firstly, a quick definition. The motivation is the, the following form called a row echelon form is one which from which we can determine the solution to a, to, uh, a linear system, okay? So suppose I've got a matrix, A. It's said to be in a row echelon form if the following two dot points are satisfied. Firstly, all non-leading uh, non or non-zero rows are right at the bottom of the matrix. And in every leading row, the leading entry is further to the right than the leading entry in any rows higher up the matrix. So when we say leading row, it's just um, a non-zero row. The first non-zero entry from the left uh, is further to the right than any of the leading entries in any rows higher up the matrix. So uh, what does that mean? It means that if you go down the rows of your matrix, the leading entries get pushed further to the right. Okay, let me do an example because that's a lot to take in. Okay, so here is an example. Let's go with, so this could represent a system of, a matrix associated with a system of equations that we've come up with through row operations. So is this matrix in a row echelon form? Okay, so what are the lead? So first of all, there's no zero uh, rows anywhere, so we, we don't need to worry about this. Okay, so all the all the rows are leading in this in this matrix. In every leading row, the leading entry is further to the right than the leading entry in any rows higher up the matrix. Okay, so so we've got the leading entry there. Okay, no problem. And then in this row, the leading entry is here. So this leading entry is further to the right than this leading entry. So we go down the leading entries, sort of go down. Um, diagonally. So this is in row echelon form. Okay, now the more of, of, of these you do, the better you'll get at them. All right, let's do another one. What about this matrix? Okay, this augmented matrix. Is this in a row echelon form? Well, that's Every row is leading because it's there's no non-zero rows. There's the leading entry of row one. There's the leading entry of row two. Again, we've sort of we're moving as we go down. We're moving to the right with our first non-zero or leading entries in the rows. So this is in a row echelon form. What about something that's not in a row echelon form? Okay, um, let's try something like. Uh, Okay, I'll turn this around. Let's try something like this. Okay, now that's the first non-zero entry in row one, so that's the leading entry. That's the leading entry in row two, but we're not moving to the right as we go down our rows with our leading entry. So this is not in a row echelon form. How about one more? Okay. How about this one? Well, that's a non that that's a leading row. That's not a leading row, but it's at the top. So it knocks out the second part. All non-leading rows are at the bottom of the matrix. Well, that's definitely not row echelon form.
Okay, so how are you going so far? Let, let's do a couple more examples. And in fact, we'll look back at some of the examples we did in a previous video. Okay, so let me share that with you. Okay, so here are some matrices from a previous video where we were talking about leading rows and leading columns, etc. Is this in a row echelon form? Well, that's the first first. Well, so first of all, none of the none of the rows are zero, so they're all leading rows. There's the leading entry of row one. There's the leading entry of row two. There's the leading entry of row three, and we're moving down. As we go down, our leading entries are, are moving to the right. So that's definitely row echelon form. What about this one? Well, you move down, and you're going to the right, but then you've got to go back to the left. That is not, not a row echelon form. Okay? So row echelon forms are important because they're going to help us easily solve linear systems just by looking at the at the form. And we may come up with that form through row operations. Now we can go further and talk about reduced row echelon form. That'll be the, um, the subject of the next presentation. If you have any comments, any questions, put them in the comments section. And thanks for watching, everyone. See you later. Bye.